and we are live. Welcome to the paddock here in Tokyo. It's time for the race debrief after round five of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. My name's Alexa Randall and I am joined today by Georgia Hennebury. Welcome along, Georgia. Thank you. What did you think of today's race? Oh man, it kept everyone on their toes. Really I think did. this was an incredible inaugural race here on the streets of Tokyo. It's Tokyo's first ever legal street race, <laughs> I would say. So bringing the sport of motorsport back into the streets of Tokyo and in the city has just been incredible so far. And it, and it proved to really, I mean, uh, I mean, that was an incredible race. It really spiced things up and not that Formula E needed spicing up because seriously, five different races, five different winners. How insane is that? It's insane. I don't think you get that in a lot of different types of motorsports. Mm -hmm. Right now, the series leaders tied Nick Cassidy, Pascal Verlein. I mean, five races into this thing, I don't know if anyone guessed that was going to happen. Yeah, well, actually, it's happened in Formula E before. In the 18-19 season, we had an eight race streak of different winners. I feel like we're getting back to that era, and it's such a Formula E thing to have. <laughs> I think so, too. And I think it keeps everyone excited each and every time they step into the racetrack because these drivers and teams know they have a viable chance of getting it done. But we also got to talk about the home team, a strong performance for Nissan, podium and points. Not bad. Absolutely. And uh, three in a row for podium points for Oliver Rowland, which mm -hmm. I think this one might be a little bit bittersweet based on how the race uh, played it's out. Twisting a little. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the positives and move on to the next one. So I think they can leave this one um, with their heads held high and move on to Italy. We've also got to talk about a tough weekend, perhaps, for both McLaren and Jaguar, who came off positive spells in the previous races and now I don't know. I don't think they'll be happy with this. You know, I yeah, I want to say yes on that, but oh. I think Nick Cassidy really made the most of the situation there. 19th to 7 because of the disqualification. That is huge, yeah. And I don't uh, this track was so hard to overtake, he really made the most of starting that deep in the field. Okay, that's a really fair point. <laughs> you've kind of, you kind of put me on the spot there a bit. <laughs> okay, well, how about you chuck your fan questions our way? We want to know what you want to know about the race today. Maybe it's a question for Georgia. Maybe it's a question about the events of the race. Who knows? But I want to see it. I think we should look at the rest of the day today, but it wouldn't be a, re a review, a debrief, without a look back at Quali. Let's go to the highlights. It is round five of the 2024 ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. We are ready to go out onto the streets of Tokyo for qualifying. That is very fast. Driver is absolutely flirting with disaster. It's now or never time. But Mortara P2 in the Mahindra. Here the tyres screaming out for mercy. Setting oh camera. no, he definitely hit the wall there. Yeah. yeah. Such a smooth style for a line. Oh. The other back, and there's a problem here for Jean-Henri Verne. And Sam Bird. Edo Mortara knocks out reigning world champion Jake Dennis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, bang goes Mitch Evans. Santa Cameron, that is one of the fastest times that we've seen so far. Oh, and you can see him soaring away. It's Gunter with a near half second advantage. It is Nissan in their home race here in Japan who go through into the finals. Now, oh, Roland! Oh, look That's at that! That's the limit, right there. Two tenths of a second up. Vincent's catching, yeah, though. He's not finished yet, is he? It's not over. Across the line he goes, it's a 119 flat. And he does take pole, it's Oliver Roland by 21 hundredths of a second. He's a pop position, again, again, well done. Congrats, it was very tight. On home soil, Oliver Roland taking his eighth career pole position. Absolute delight! Welcome to Tokyo. We're now joined by reserve and development driver for Andretti Formula E team, Zane Maloney. Zane, welcome along. How's your day been? It's been great. I mean, it's great to be on. Um, <laughs> I've had an amazing day. You've been enjoying watching your team do pretty well on the podium today. Yeah, it was a good race, um, both in the points. I mean, um, can't ask for much better. I think it's a lot of chaos in Formula E, so when you can get both cars in the points, it's always a good thing. Well, how about we throw it back to what we were just watching with that VT, all about qualifying highlights. It was a trickier quality for your guys, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Formula E is so close. Uh, Jake made it through to the, the duels. Um, Norman missed out by one tenth or something like that. So Brutal. It's, it's difficult. Um, but for sure, we, we knew we had a, a good race car. Mm -hmm. uh, we showed that again in the races. And now let's get your perspective. Fast forward to the race. That was intense, no matter any way that you put it. So especially for your team, Andretti. It was very intense. Um, 
I mean, the battle at the front was switching lap by lap, and uh, for us, we tried to, to stay without attacking um, until the end, let's say, uh, and then it all bunched up at the end, which made it quite difficult for Jake. Norman had to help him out a little bit, and vice versa, so good teamwork, um, and yeah, in, in the end, a good result. Absolutely. From a driver's perspective, what do you think of this track, right? Like, it looks pretty challenging for the boys out there, super physical too. It's very tough. Uh, I mean, I drove it on the sim, mm -hmm. and uh, you were flying in the air for half the time. <laughs> so I, I'm sure that they have a sore backs now, but uh, it's definitely a driver's circuit. And I think the, the, the top drivers came to the front this weekend, and uh, it really showed. As a driver, does a new circuit excite you in any way? Just the challenge of leveling that playing field and uh, the thought of that it could really be anyone's game? Yeah, for sure, because then, uh, I mean, the margins are bigger initially and you can see who learnt the track the quickest, uh, but in the end, when you get to the end of the weekend, it all tightens back up and uh, it, it's always spectacular. I mean, when you go to a new circuit in Japan, uh, you're always excited. Japan is an amazing place, um, so we've just had a great weekend. Zane, we're excited to have you with us at the Rookie Test in Misano. Thank you so much for joining us, because we're now going to bring in... Thank our you. second place driver for today, Oliver Thanks. Rowland. Oh, no, Quick you. switcheroo, boys. <laughs> hey, Oliver, congratulations, mate. Let's let's talk. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. I mean, uh, after a bit of reflection, I'm uh, obviously happy to be second at Nissan's home race. Three podiums in a row, two pole positions at the last three races. I have to be happy. Um, <laughs> there is an element of disappointment starting on pole. I'm um, not being able to convert it after leading so many laps, but in hindsight, I did my best and I'm not sure there was too much more I could have done. Let's talk about that moment a little bit. It looked like uh, the overtake was almost uh, given in a way. What was the call on that situation? Yeah, the, the safety car um, affected my targets quite a lot. I dropped the target significantly, so I didn't have as much energy as before the safety car, so I knew I was going to be able to be overtaken. Um, and yeah, when he committed, I said, go because I need the slipstream to build back up my targets and that's what I did and then on the last lap I tried but um, uh, he, d he did everything right so it seemed like you were giving it everything you possibly could there at the end would you do anything differently on that last lap well yeah maybe I could be more bold and aggressive but then when you have all these people here watching in the garage if I put us both in the wall on the last lap I don't think it's gonna go down very well so um, yeah I took took the points, took the podium, took the confidence, and uh, yeah, to be honest, he did a great job. And I think the only other way we could have done better is maybe by dropping back a bit at the start and taking the slipstream. Um, but it's easy to say that after. I was gonna say that I saw people on social talking about what we're calling, or they're calling, the Oliver Rowland redemption arc. That after a tough season last year, you're back, three podiums in a row. Can you just reflect on that journey for me a little? Yeah, I had two very difficult years, the last two years. Um, I stopped halfway through last year to, because I was almost that unhappy with where the situation I'd, be, I'd got myself into. Mentally was tough. Um, I took a big leap of faith to come back to, to, to break my contract in the middle of the year, come back to a team where I had a lot of love before. Um, but I knew deep down in, in my heart that they supported me and and that means a lot as a driver, you know, when you when you turn up and the whole team looks at you with those eyes like they believe in you. It mean it, it makes so a big sweet. difference. And uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm in a really good rhythm, and I'm absolutely loving being back with Nissan. And yeah, hope long may these continue. And a word for your teammate too. Tricky qualifying for him, and then to come through and score points. Yeah, double points. He did a mega job. I mean, look, he's had a bit of bad luck in the last couple of races, but um, he's going to be right there. We saw how fast he was last year. And also the fans here today, how phenomenal have they been? Just, I mean, your grandstand alone, the Nissan grandstand's insane. Yeah, I was in front of my garage and qualifying <laughs> there, no pressure. waving their flags. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's amazing. I mean, to bring Formula E to Japan and, and see everything that it's, uh, that it's done here, see the interest from the people and uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been cool. Now we just asked Zane the question, but you have first hand knowledge. This track looked absolutely physical as it can possibly be. Are you going to be visiting the chiropractor next week? Yeah, my back's a bit sore <laughs> with, the, with the jump, but uh, yeah, definitely I'll be taking a visit. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time. Alexa, anything else for Ah, Thank you so much, Ollie. Let's see what Jake Dennis, our other podium setter, had to say. Ah, sorry. Oh my goodness. He snuck in. We've got okay. Maximilian Gunther in the corner. Uh, Let's swap you and Oliver thank you over. <laughs> <laughs> He's like hey, stealthily he, tucked himself yeah. away there. I was like, cool. <laughs> Mate, congratulations. What a drive today. I, I think I spoke to you in the autograph session. I said, is the podium possible? And you played it down. You played it down. And here we are. 
Yeah, it's amazing, honestly, to win the first uh, first Tokyo Prix on this track. It's uh, it's huge. I think we're really proud about our whole weekend. We've been in the top three in every session. Um, already a podium would have been great, but to take to take more than that is obviously uh, pretty special. But let's talk about the moment that you took the lead. Do you feel like it was given to you in any way, shape, or form, or did it come as a surprise to you when you made the move? So the thing is, I think Oli did an absolute perfect race because he defended himself exactly in the way you have to do. Um, in a normal way, there was no chance to, to pass him. And he was always faster than me through turn 9, that's why usually I never had a chance into turn 10. And I sort of thought, okay, maybe there's a chance if I come out of the blue with a big surprise because I was quite far back. And uh, I just went for it and he saved quite quite a lot at this, at this stage. And um, then he reacted too late, so um, yeah, that's how I got the lead and obviously this transformed the, the race for us. It is no doubt those last few laps were intense. Was there ever a moment where you said, okay, I have this? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, it, it was my aim and th that's what we, what we were working for in the last seven, eight laps of the race. But um, if you're not in a slipstream, the thing is you consume a lot of energy. And yeah, my, my target was sort of stabilizing or going down. Oli was able to save and I think in the last lap he had more energy compared to me so he was able to attack me into turn 10, into turn 15 um, but yeah we just stayed in front and uh, there was not a single more uh, kilowatt of energy in, in this car and across the line so. I want to talk to you about your team right because it's been a, an interesting couple of months with lots of changes they've made all the right decisions along the way it seems like for example in Sao Paulo where you took the hit and you made up places to make points and now today Again, a word for them. I feel like it's been really well handled. Yeah, absolutely. I think we we already had a good start into the season because you know we consistently scored scored the points on tracks that were very difficult for us last year. So that was already a good starting point. And then yeah, we had a big decision to make before Sao Paulo. Obviously, it's always painful if you take a penalty like that. But we thought it's going to open up the season for us. And Sao Paulo already was was brilliant for for the pace. And here we. We, we obviously took the win, so it was nice. It was a pleasure to see you smiling on the podium. Even if you did have a little, a little slip, was that, was that what we call a little slip with the champagne? <laughs> yeah, there was, there was very little traction on the, on the stage. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that was the only mistake the only of mistake the weekend, so uh, I'm happy to make it on the podium. <laughs> we'll allow that, we'll allow that. And we'll let you go, Max. Thank All you so right, much for joining you. us. Congratulations. I'll hold on to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Cheers. <laughs> and right, how about now we get to hear from our third place podium finisher, Jake Dennis. Jake Dennis, that race was so tight. Third could very easily have been first. How did you assess that one? Yeah, it was close. I mean, full respect to the boys out front, like Roland and, and Max did a really strategic race and played it perfectly. We were sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, I had two Porsches behind me, which were working together. And then there was me uh, stuck in between this lot. And to be honest, halfway through the race, I was like, this is looking like a P7 uh, because I still had to take two attack modes and wasn't looking great, but classic Formula E turned it around and uh, yeah, we stood her on the podium. Um, felt like I probably could have got involved a little bit more on the final, uh, final lap with these guys, but I just wanted to come over in a P3 and, and get the points and um, something which uh, we can be happy with. You know, you come a long way to Tokyo, 14 hour flight and to stick it in the wall on the final lap, I didn't want to do that. So yeah, happy with 15 points. It says a lot that you're almost sighing, but yet you're still on the podium. Consistency is what ultimately won you your championship last year. And that's kind of what you're on the road to this year in terms of just getting those points when you have to. Yeah, I think as I get older and more experienced, I sort of just accept what I've got underneath me on certain days. And we did that in qualifying, you know, P5 today was the absolute maximum for the car. And to come home with third against two cars, which were a lot, lot quicker than us today uh, is very, very good. So hopefully when we get back to circuits, which play a bit more into our strengths, we can uh, pick up the pieces there and, and, and try and get the big wins like we did last year. But ultimately, uh, yeah, points and uh, yeah, another podium for the team. Well done, mate. Thank you. Right, <laughs> this is so chaotic here. And this is what happens when we get to be in the heart of the paddock. It's all of the drama. We've had drivers toing and froing. But how about we talk about our third place man, Jake Dennis. Let's do it. What a day for him. Because I think he said on the broadcast that he would have been like kind of happy with P7. Yeah, I mean, qualified P5. And although we saw some overtaking happening on this track, managed to make it up to P3 podium place. 
including some fantastic energy management and also a cheeky little dicing between him and Antonio Felix da Costa. Ooh. So yeah, great result for him and I'm sure he'll be chuffed with that. You have to imagine he's a world champion for a reason right. and that's <laughs> the move Very valid that point. <laughs> world champions make. So I think that he capitalized on everything that he could do there. Very much so. I think actually we should talk about that kind of teammates working together because firstly we had that with him and Norman Nato. What did yes. you think of that? Yeah, I think it's tactical. Like obviously it's legal, they're allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw it a bit um, up and down the grid. So I think it's a clever move by Andretti. And I've heard that Nato's penalty has been overturned. Breaking so, news, guys. <laughs> Dropping that in there. Yeah, so we don't know how much that's going to affect the results yet, whether that will put him back into the point scoring positions or not. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, like overall, I'm sure Andretti will be we're pleased with that result and clever, like you say, with taking the attack mode and keeping the grid back. So basically what you're saying is there's a lot of fingers crossed over in the Andretti I'm, pit right I'm now. What I'm saying is that we're probably not going to have results until midnight tonight or something like that. It'll be it's a late night month. for Katie Berman, oh, basically. Oh yeah, <laughs> my favourite kind. <laughs> I also want to mention, because I think you and I were watching this together earlier and we actually gasped at how intelligent it was we love a bit of with drama. the two <laughs> Porsche drivers mm. working together to make sure that Pascal could get out of attack mode in that early stage of the race where it was really all bunched together. Yeah, I wonder if the Porsche powertrain guys had that kind of discussion being fairly close to each other on the grid. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it was a, a clever clever move. And like we say, one that you're allowed to do and just making the most of it. And it proves why it's so important to qualify well together. I mean, if you look at a com completely contrasting team, Mahindra, you had Edo Mortara up in third and Nick De Vries right you know, towards the back of the pack. So it's not a not an ideal thing and why teammates need to stick together. But actually that's a really good note that Antonio Felix da Costa, after a, such a tough start to the season, he's proving his place now at Porsche and he's showing that he can help Pascal, who's particularly in the championship hunt, to get to the front and defend him and work together. Yeah. yeah, and I talked to him after the race and he said that he was disappointed because he felt like he could do something there. Obviously trying to make those passes and so it didn't tough. work out for him on a track. He felt like he needed to be aggressive at, so he did everything he could there, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. But if you look at it, he's now scored points the last two races, so things looking up for Felix Costa. <laughs> Very much so. Like you say, if you're you're not a racing driver, you don't go for the tiny little gaps that exist. So, And we all know Antonio, he likes to go for these kind of big, bold <laughs> Dramatic. moves. Dramatic. And unfortunately, this one just didn't quite work out for him. Well, how about we talk about a few other drivers who maybe didn't have the ideal or the perfect day. Jag's 100th race, and it ended in a pretty disastrous way for Mitch Evans. Let's take a look at what went on. This particular point, the Costa is in a good situation. He's oh, two of that's this. Up. Mitch Evans into the wall at turn nine again. Oh, disaster for Jaguar here in Tokyo, their 100th race. And unfortunately, we say sayonara to the Kiwi. Nearby. Yeah, it's worked out nicely. This is what happened here to Mitch Evans then. So, did it all happen of his own making? Oh, he oh, had contact with oh, set a camera back on damage? the inside oh, with yeah, lights. So, he just outbreaks himself there on the inside. It's a pretty tough one for Mitch, especially on their 100th race. And they're not going to be super happy with that, are they, Katie? No, I mean, we did maybe jinx it a little bit in the preview show. I think I actually put Nick Cassidy win down on the card. So sorry, Nick Katie. Cassidy. Apologies for that. Don't come for me. Um, but yeah, like the first time all season that they've not had a car on the podium, not even a Jaguar powertrain car on the podium at all, which is a crazy stat. So this was definitely supposed to be a celebration weekend for them, especially Mitch Evans 100th race with the team. So, you know, they've just been through it all together. But like I said earlier today, I don't think it was as bad of a day for Nick Cassidy as it could have been 19th to seven. I mean, he did everything he possibly could to could to make those gains. And I think he did a great job at it. Yeah, and he's still leading the championship. Yeah, tied yeah. with Pascal Verline now 63 points leading that championship. Ooh, good stat so, drop. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Just, uh, Just, uh, um, so overall, I think he can leave this event saying I, maybe I didn't qualify or where I wanted to start this race, um, but at the end of the day, I did what I could. Yeah, right How about we talk about McLaren? Because if Jack had a bad day, McLaren had a nightmare day. I'd say so. And this was surprising to me, especially going all the way back through qualifying. Sam Bird not qualifying very well at all. Uh, this was surprising, especially coming off their win in mm -hmm. Sao Paulo. Do you guys have any information on maybe why that would have been? Yeah, the quali for Sam was tough. I think there was just a few issues with communication with the race engineer. And there was such a messy quali for them that Sam was coming in, wanting to clean up the tires. They didn't have tires for him, sending him back out. It's just 
all of a hullabaloo and unfortunately it didn't pan out the way they wanted, especially after Sam's success out in Sao Paulo. Yeah, we also heard from Jake Hughes on the radio. I was listening in on the Formula E app and listening to his radio. Nice good job. plug there. Always listen to it during the race. It's so <laughs> good. Um, but yeah, he was punted off by Lucas Degrassi. And actually, there was no further action on it, which I am a little bit surprised by. But mm -hmm. we have got experts like Alexander Sims, an ex-Formula E race winner, uh, working with the FIA this weekend. And obviously, they've come to that decision not to penalise. But yeah, unfortunate for, for Sam and for Jake. A very different weekend to what they had last time out in Sao Paulo. Wasn't the incident reversed in Quali that... Hughes got a penalty for impeding Degrassi. Mm -hmm. oh, You're gosh. absolutely right. Everyone's got fits out today. Everyone just fancies a scrap. <laughs> um, I think one of the more unfortunate stories today has to be Mahindra. Edo Motara finally, we thought, got his first points of the season, but alas, it wasn't to be. Katie, what happened? Oh, well, it sounded like it was an NG over usage, which is uh, not ideal for Edo. Like you say, they're the only team, Mahindra now, to not have any points yeah. on the board, the which is heartbreaking. Brutal. And they've come so close on so many occasions. Yeah. Edo did a fantastic performance in the Jules, his second consecutive Jules performance, but it just wasn't meant to be. A late, like taking attack mode late as well, didn't really pay off for them. And yeah, then the disqualification is just, must be gutting for the team. And I think, I don't know. It feels like they were finally getting to a place where they could score points. I, I don't know what what luck needs to change for them to actually... Is, is it luck or is there something that can be fixed within the team? I don't know. I think it is a lot of luck, to be honest with you. Like They've made such huge gains to that first race that we had in Mexico City to now. And it just seems like they're always close, but not quite. But maybe Misano, a somewhat home race Redo, could bring some good luck for them. But yeah, the only team without points. And you have to imagine this one, they probably had their hopes up. Brand new track for everyone, yeah. kind of leveling that playing field. And unfortunately, it just did not work in their favor. It did not. Hey, at least we can put a positive spin on it. Heading to Misano next. Home race Fredo. Best of luck to them to try and turn things around because we'd all love to see it. We really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've got some fan questions that have been sent in throughout Ooh. the show. Oh. These are going to put you guys on the spot. Oh, great. <laughs> Katie, I'm chucking this one to you first because this is tricky. Okay. Who is responsible for energy overuse? Well, that would be, I think, probably somewhat of the driver, mm -hmm. but potentially communications with the team as well. Like, you're listening to the radio, they're always giving updates, whether that's like in um, phonetic alphabet, you'll hear, I don't know, alpha, beta, something or other. I don't know my phonetic alphabet, so <laughs> this is a bad example to give. I like, like you're trying at least. Yeah, this is good. updating the team on how their power output is like and yeah, perhaps it's a little bit of team communications, but also drivers maybe just giving it too much and overusing their, their energy. Strong answer. I don't know. I feel like I waffled. Better than mine would have been. No, okay. A lot more concise than mine would have been. Okay. Why did the drivers receive penalties following qualifying today? Who's going to take it? Yeah. Katie! Well, <laughs> penalties, penalties. There was a lot of impeding. So everyone's getting on. in the way of each other, basically. Essentially, okay. yeah. A lot of things like that happening. So, yeah, basically. That's also another thing that will rely a lot on communication. Being told, so-and-so is on a lap behind you. You mm -hmm. need to maybe move out the way. And that's just not being done. But this is a really tricky circuit. There's a lot of blind corners and uh, a lot of ways to get in the way of other drivers. So. It is so narrow yes. as well, so as we narrow. saw on the race as, as well. So if if you're directly in front of someone or anything, there's really not a lot of places that you can go. That's so, true, yeah. Unfortunate for a lot of drivers. Yeah, yeah. This is a much more fun, unformula question, but I'm going to answer anyway. <laughs> Have we enjoyed Japan? What's been the highlight of Japan? Apart from the Formula E Tokyo E Prix, of course. Apart from it? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the food. It has been so incredibly fresh. Good job. So out. good. Everywhere you look, there's just options. And uh, it, yeah, the food for me, hands down. Yeah, I love seeing so many fans here, especially so many so passionate fans. Oh, sorry. Are we talking about the racetrack? Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I can't talk about food. I've had McDonald's and KFC for dinner while I've been here. This has been Katie a disaster. Fairman. I need to go and like dine out on a massive sushi platter tonight. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. <laughs> um, karaoke, maybe then, if we're going to go for unserious answers. I think this is time that we start our own karaoke session. Well, <laughs> or maybe not, maybe not. Right, <laughs> let's say thank Later. you both so much for joining us. Before we do start singing and inevitably get in trouble, yeah. Georgia Henry, Katie Fairman, I've been Alexa Rundle. It's been a pleasure to debrief this race with you guys. It's not long now until we head to Misano for round six and seven of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Season 10, it's well and truly on.
I think he liked your car. Right away to start the season. Dennis takes the victory! Yeah, boy! Just use the energy. It's Jaguar and Cassidy on top. You're absolute beauty! Nice one! Who is going to take the win of Red?